Hello, this is the Pithy Bikes channel. A while back, we made these head tube arms and cones. In this video, we'll not only do the same for the C tube, but we'll also improve those parts. This is the head tube cone that we made in an earlier video, and as you can see, it is able to wiggle around, and that's bad. Bad because it should be secured exactly 4 inches out from the jig. So we'll make a similar cone for the C tube, but improve the design. And we're also going to improve these arms. You can see these two blocks are attached, and one of them is a little lower. It's not aligned as well as it should be. You guys may remember this piece. This is the arm that I had made in another video, and uh, I put the hole in the wrong place. So I'm going to salvage this piece. Fun fact, this chip brush you see in my videos is made by Martha Stewart. Okay, this is something I did not do the last time I made this part. I'm actually marking where I will um, measure in with the center finder. So I'm going to uh, measure on these two marked edges. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when I do the part that connects to this part, I will measure in on the same edges on the that part as well. Okay, here's the block we just drilled, and this part gets bolted onto that block, and I'm going to mark the edges of this part so that when we measure in, we're measuring in with the same edges, and the holes will end up in the same place. And here's the finished part bolted to the arm. I skipped the making of this part because I already made the exact same part in a previous video. Here I am testing the alignment and it is spot on. Now I'm uh, taking that piece off and what I'm going to do is flip it around so that I can get this piece as a whole into the vise. And the reason I'm doing that is so that when I get my center finder on this piece, I want to measure in from uh, the right here, that part that contacts the jig. So I'm getting the center of that and then I measured in 4 inches so that I can cut this hole.
I want to send a big thanks out to Veteran Bicycle Company for uh, his great comments on machining this cone. So in some in the earlier video I machined two cones and in that video I uh, did some machining I, then I removed the cone from the chuck I flipped it around and then put it back in the chuck and did more operations the problem with that is when you remove the cone and then put it back in you can't ensure that you've reinstalled the cone into the chuck the exact same way that it was before and uh, if you watch that video closely, the older video, you can see that um, that cut I made is not concentric and you can tell because the edge is wobbling. And so this time around I decided to do all the operations without removing the cone and I will, when I'm done with all the operations, then I will cut it off of the, um, off of the stock. The other improvement to this part is I machined a key on the base of the cone. So that's what that little um, that little nub sticking out there is. And so that key will fit into the, uh, the hole that I drilled into the arm. That was another recommendation made by Veteran Bicycle Company. And uh, I really appreciate the help. This part is way better now. Thanks so much. Thank you guys for watching and leaving comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's helped me out a lot. When I started uh, making these videos, I actually wasn't sure if I would continue doing so because I honestly didn't wasn't sure if anyone be, would be interested in this stuff. But I figured, hey, I like making videos. I'm gonna do it and just see what happens. And I know that from my perspective, when I was looking for information, I really wanted my, I wanted to see a video series that someone else had already put up on YouTube. I did searches and I found bits and pieces, but not as much as I would have liked and nothing that really covered uh, the whole process. My original thinking was, uh, when making these videos was that people will watch them and be able to learn something about frame building But what I didn't expect was how much I would learn from you guys Thank you guys so much All right, the wire inside the drill chuck is to catch the aluminum after it is cut off And that vibration sound you just heard is uh, the noise you'll hear when the uh, piece is not turning at the correct RPM. Uh, so what I did is I slowed it down. This was after a lot of trial and error. Uh, I slowed it down and now I was getting uh, a better cut. However, this part was uh, very troublesome and parting is pretty new to me. Uh, you can see it wobbling in there, that's because the, the tool actually bit into the, uh, the aluminum and stopped the chuck from turning. Uh, it threw it all off center and then I had to kind of, I had to reinstall the piece into the chuck and get it as close as I could. Uh, the, the good part about, uh, I guess the good news about all of that is that, um, this last cut does not need to be precise. It's at the top of the the cone where nothing contacts it. So it doesn't need to be like perfectly flat with the rest of the cone or um, true with the rest of the cone. Here's a better look at the top where it was parted and it looks pretty terrible. And oh yeah, so this the that part I actually made a new part because that other part I made the taper the wrong size. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Pithy Bikes video if I didn't machine the same part at least. <laughs> 
two times. And that's it for this week. I'll see you guys next time.